Well, good morning, everybody. I hope everyone's well hydrated after last night's dinner. Uh, seemed to be, I think I lost five pounds on that. But um, I'm Kevin McKernan. I'm from Medicinal Genomics. Um, we've been hosting this conference, I can't remember how long, maybe six years. Um, but I do want to spend some time today dwelling on this, uh, this concept of, of welcome. Uh, it's, it's imperative in science right now as uh, we reflect on the welcoming of all these you know, different ideas. Uh, at CanMed, everyone is welcome here. We, we have an exceptional diversity of international attendees. We thank you for traveling as, as far as you have. Uh, this, uh, this really does make it a, a better conference when we have opinions from all over the world. Um, so we are officially now uh, post-pandemic, I think as of last week, uh, which is quite refreshing. And we can think of no better place to kick this off uh, than at the former hotel where we had planned the Human Genome Project. So many of you may not be aware, but this is a, a conference that was held for probably 20 years on these beaches and in these hallways where we had planned out and mapped out how to sequence the Human Genome Project. It was a, it was a conference known as uh, AGBT. Uh, so many of the names like Francis Collins and Kerry Mullis, Eric Lander, John Salston, Bob Waterston, and sometimes Craig Venter uh, was allowed to come. Uh, and we would hash out how we were going to tackle uh, the Genome Project here, and much of the next generation sequencing uh, revolution that occurred was actually mapped out down there at Quinn's Beach Bar. Uh, so uh, a lot of history here, and I think it's important history because I think we we're embarking on a very similar scale of a project here. This is really like a human cannabinoid project. We have so much to learn about what's going on with hundreds if not thousands of compounds and how these things can uh, potentially interact with, uh, with all the different uh, receptors we're finding the activity with. So, so whether you think this pandemic's over or not, we welcome you. And whether you think masks work, ivermectin works, hydroxychloroquine works, vaccines work, we don't care. We, we welcome you. We want all of these diverse ideas here to be discussed because they are starting to touch on the endocannabinoid system. Uh, this con controversy is something I think we should embrace, investigate, as we're all too aware how politics can distort the scientific consensus on any given topic and how long that has taken to reverse on, on the topic of cannabinoids. Uh, what we are, care about here at CanMed is just open and in-person dialogues over very nuanced topics. What we know that where, where the brighter future lies is with people with different scientific views, meeting in person, communicating, brainstorming, and collaborating. And what we can sense the, the dimmer future is going to be is one of an algorithmically controlled uh, Zoom meeting, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, all of these things that we know can have uh, third parties that can be influenced, censored, uh, and if not uh, uh, completely distorted. So while these social media platforms can certainly connect us, uh, they can just as easily isolate us into different factions ever arguing over smaller details. Uh, and I think if many of you can remember the history in the cannabis field, if, if William Randolph Hearst were alive today, he'd probably own a social media company. Uh, I, I think you'd, uh, yeah, and regardless of whether you think Elon Musk is going to, you know, handle these powers better or worse, I think everyone here can agree that it's very dangerous for governments to launder First Amendment violations or journalistic censorship through the companies they regulate. Uh, if they can manufacture consent for war outside our borders, they can easily manufacture this, this civil discordance inside our own borders with these types of new tools. So uh, we can't have them camouflaging dictates of scientific consensus, and uh, otherwise science will become nothing more than this marketing message or political campaign slogan, you know, ever, ever more political intrusions into our lives. So uh, it's very important that we, we give this tremendous scrutiny. Um, this gives them a tremendous amount of narrative control, and the cannabis industry is uniquely aware of how long that type of narrative control can take to reverse. So um, just to give you some sense of uh, the last few years, you know, when the entire world focuses on one problem and often comes at the expense of a more sound allocation of resources, we have seen addictions and overdoses go through the roof in the last few years, and it's something the cannabis community knows you know, how, to, how, how to chip in on. If, if you look at, um, in PubMed, in SARS-CoV-2, there's over 200,000 publications for SARS-CoV-2 since 2020. There's only 32,000 publications for cannabis since 1840. All right, so this is a tremendous torrent of information uh, that you can choose your own adventure view through, frankly. When this much information comes raging through uh, into, the, uh, into NCBI, into PubMed, no one has read 100% of the literature. All right, so you can walk your way through the COVID literature and be 100% right with the position that you have, and someone else can go through that same literature on a different path and be 100% right. And the way we're going to resolve these differences is in person. I don't think it's going to happen through Zoom. 
Uh, so we very much cherish people coming to scientific conferences like this to discuss an idea bridge and bring these things together. I, I personally feel we're witnessing a scientific schism right now, very analogous to the Gutenberg printing press and the Protestant Revolution or Reformation. Uh, but mainly around this pandemic, we have very divided opinions on, on, on what to do uh, with a situation like this. And the printing press was power, and people tried to centralize that power. I think the best antidote to this temptation is to further decentralize scientific communication. And CanMed is just one node on that network of scientists and, and, and physicians trying to pursue truth. So the more that we can disintermediate third parties that regulate our speech, the better we can be, I think, at invention and uh, in figuring out what we can do with the ECS. And the world needs us right now. We are now seeing more evidence of the importance of the ECS in, in treating COVID. And we're, we're well aware of many of the comorbidities in COVID having cannabinoid links, right? We've seen COPD as being a major comorbidity, and we know that there's cannabis oil. Uh, activity there, cancer, thrombosis, there's a host of these things. If we could treat the comorbidities, we could probably knock the pandemic off the map day one, uh, but that didn't happen. So as we stand here today, Ireland is advocating medical misinformation laws under the guise of eliminating hate speech. We have similar things going on in Australia. Um, to give you a few cases, and you don't have to agree with these physicians, but you can perhaps sympathize with the, how their position could become you. Dr. Sukarit Bhakti is being tried next week in Germany for speaking out about the pandemic, and they're guising this in the terms of hate speech. We have Thomas Binder, who was actually committed to a psych ward and forced to take psychiatric medicine because of his position on, on ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine. I don't, I don't know which one he spoke out about, but this is in Switzerland. He's a physician in, in internal medicine practicing for 24 years and had a doctorate in immunology and virology. I think his voice was probably worth hearing. Um, so you may disagree with the, what these physicians um, have said, but I hope that you reflect that this persecution can easily be turned on us. Uh, the cannabis field is, does not have a consensus, uh, at least not in the mainstream arena. This is quite often stigmatized. Uh, and certainly, this, these physicians here are saving lives. So this is something I hope we can all take some re um, reflection on. But we are a group of scientists and physicians that have also seen this movie before. We know the importance of outside-of-the-box thinking in medicine. Truth isn't going to be declared from on high. It's generated spontaneously with diverse ideas uh, and with people interacting, I think, in person. So let's make CanMed that place. I thank you for coming. Welcome to Marco Island. With that, I have no, the great honor of uh, introducing to you a person who has committed his career to reversing inaccurate information about cannabis, and that is Dr. Ethan Russo. Thank you.